Jumping in on Manx Radio with Howard and Chris Kane. Hello, good evening, and welcome. Can you believe it? It is almost heading towards the big day, as we call it here on Manx Radio. And we're sort of feeling fairly festive in the jumping in studio, which, of course, as you know, is the best in modern and contemporary jazz, even at this time of the year, with myself, H. And me, Chris. Yes, welcome along to this week's show. And can you believe it? Just eight more sleeps. Yes, Christmas is picking up and uh, gaining pace like a giant snowball rolling down a hill. And what a year it's been for jazz. One of the few positives to come out of the last couple of years was the creativity sparked by staying home for a while as the many, many lockdown jazz albums of Born Testament. So as the Amazon, that great river of present deliveries, slows to a halt, it's time to have the presence, see what I did there, of mind to go and explore the local emporia to top up those last minute buys. So H, what have been sounding like the most swinging stocking stuffers this week and which are consigned to stuffing the bird? Hmm, well there's been a lot of good stuff coming out this year, it does have to be said. We will have our best of later on. Uh, for this evening, um, I've been listening to bits of it, but the, I've actually got the CD I've been listening to now in more depth. The latest of the trio of trios with uh, Al Charles. Uh, and going back a bit with TCB, which I hadn't listened to for a while. Still sounding pretty f- fresh stuff, I must admit. And also, uh, Connie Han, we saw her down in London not that long ago. And yeah, I've been listening to her latest. Hopefully we might get a word with her a bit later on. And from me, well, we're on time for a change. We make mischief in memoriam. We have a birthday bear. And thanks to getting us going, here's Invitation from the UMO Jazz Orchestra.
Love Keeper's invitation, given an energetic workout and a swinging arrangement there by baritone man Kenny Berger. And uh, do you recognise anybody else on that, do you think? Uh, no, it, it did sound a bit like Michael Brecker on the saxophone. But, well, um, indeed it uh, was. Yeah. The unmistakable, I think, tenor of Mike Brecker recorded in front of an enthusiastic crowd at Helsinki's Royal Cotton Club back in 1995, although not released until some years later. Taken from us far too soon at the age of just 57 back in 2007. Gosh, it's... Uh, goes by quickly, doesn't it? We should be thankfully left such a fantastic recorded legacy behind. Charles Lloyd, I think he was uh, taking some influence from some of the greats going back in the day. Not Michael Brecker, because Charles would have been around a long time Mm -hmm. before Michael Brecker ever actually got going. In his 80s, still going strong, and not just sort of marking time, as it were, but coming out with albums which are getting critical reviews still well up there and up in the list again, as indeed was his latest trios, a trio of trios he's brought out, spaced out over 2023. One in the spring, one in the summer, and the last one came out towards the back end. Um, We'd heard a little bit before, uh, I I ordered a copy of the CD, because I still like the CDs. A CD, Grandpa? Yes, indeed. Um, But I like to have the CD and play to it, and I ordered it ages ago. It only just turned up, so I thought I ought to celebrate it by playing a track. So this is the last one, a trio with Julian Lage. The guitar player who we saw at London uh, 2021, I think it was, and Zakia Hussein, uh, the inevitable Zakia Hussein, the world's best tablet player, I think, or certainly the most recorded. You would have thought he plays everywhere and anywhere, both in the jazz, in fusion, and in the classical Indian idiom as well. Just a brilliant player and musician. And he does a bit of vocals as well on this and some other bits of percussion. An interesting album. I haven't had a chance to really digest it as much as I would like yet, so it's growing on me, shall we say. But let's hear any case. There's one here where I think we get a bit of everything. We get some of Julian's guitar. I think we get a bit of singing. We certainly get a bit of tablet playing, which doesn't feature on all the tracks. And, of course, Charles himself. Nikita's Lament.
कहे करता गुरु Thank you. 
Nikita's Lament from the last of the trio of trios from Charles Lloyd in 2022, Sacred Thread, with Zakia Hussein on tabla there and a bit of percussion and also providing the vocals, Julian Lage on guitar. It is, it has to be said, a dividing opinion, uh, it must be said, here in the studio and... Um, to a degree, elsewhere, I know I was listening to a Jazz Record Request quite recently and they did one of their sort of right people sending in their request for their favourite record of the year. This one came up from a JIR listener and the, the gentleman in question said, oh, easily the best of the three trio albums that he brought out. Um, now, I, I don't know. I have got all three of them and I've listened to all three of them. I haven't listened to this one as intently as the other two. So the other two, of course, was uh, the Ocean Trio with Gerald Clayton and uh, Anthony Wilson, and then the uh, Chapel, which I think was the first one, with Thomas Morgan on bass, Bill Frizzell on guitar. Um, the jury's out. I'll need to give it more time to listen out. It's not immediately buying me as the best of the three, or clearly the best of the three, as the JR correspondent said, but we'll give it time. You've got to allow sometimes albums to grow on you, and I haven't had a chance to really digest all the other tracks. As I say, the tablet isn't. It wasn't quite what I was expecting. It is a bit more perhaps classical sounding with the singing um, and the tabla doesn't feature on all the tracks there's flute on some the sax on others but never less than interesting a Charles Lloyd and the trio Lord knows what he's going to do in 2023 but I hope it's good Incidentally, he's bound to get at least one of them in the albums of the year choices, isn't he? And uh, Julian Large uh, has a new album coming out in the new year and tour and uh, with regard to Charles Lloyd influences he cited in a recent interview about how he was being influenced by Lester Young, Billy Holiday, and of course Charlie Parker. Next, a recent find from me and an album that's been on repeat in the car for a while. It's the debut release in his own name from Colorado based guitarist Tim Wendell. Tim cut his teeth for 10 years or so on the Philadelphia scene before moving to New York, where he was fortunate enough to take a job in the pit of The Color Purple on Broadway, which led to a nationwide tour, subsequently opened the door to a number of gigs with other jazz luminaries such as Dave Liebman, Dave Douglas, Ralph Alessi and Art Lander to name but a few. So an album in his own name was long overdue. From Westwood U, here's the aptly titled During December. Thank you. 
Mm-hmm. During December, from guitarist Tim Wendell and his septet, uh, sounding a lot bigger than a septet, actually, from their debut album, Westwood U. Uh, really engaging album. This, I think the uh, band sounds great. Occasionally, they swell to a non with a couple of additional woodwinds. Equally at home with soaring rocky solos in odd meters, as we just heard, or in gentle ballads. The writing and the tight ensemble work is a sheer pleasure to listen to. One to watch. I think the album is called Westwood U, and it doesn't appear to be available on a CD, I'm afraid, H, at the moment. It's available on all the popular streaming services. Streaming. That's a bad word in the studio. Streaming. Um, This isn't streaming. This uh, would have first come out on vinyl, I feel fairly certain. Not 78, but definitely coming out on vinyl. It almost sort of fell off the shelves when I was looking at something the other day and uh, thinking about, it's always nice to mix it up a little bit. I thought, I haven't heard this for quite some time. TCB, the Alan Skidmore Quartet. I shudder to think, well, I can tell you at the end of it just how long ago this was recorded, but still sounding... Pretty darn good, as well it, well it might with the likes of Alan Skidmore on tenor, Malcolm Griffiths on trombone, the great John Taylor on piano, Chris Lawrence, I think still going, on bass, I hope he is, Tony Levin on drums, and um, on a few tracks also Mike Osborne and John Sermon. One on, one off. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is Mark Elias saluting Chris and H on Jumpin' In.
There we go. Very nice indeed. I like that. One of my favourite tracks from the new album from Connie Han, uh, who we were pleased to see down in the London Jazz Festival what, a few weeks ago now, isn't it? Going back. Where's the time going in any case? With her, well, actually, at the festival, she was with her trio, uh, with uh, Bill Wysaski. Uh, on drums who's been her mentor as well as her drummer fantastic drummer but also really he has been her mentor for years and sort of has catapulted her into into the limelight she's got now I think in many ways working with her on the album uh, he is on drums as well but she's also joined by the great John Patitucci on bass uh, Catisse Buckingham on some tracks on uh, piccolo and alto flute and Rich Perry on the tenor sax, just touring with the trio, like I said, when we saw her, and uh, she was doing her mini tour around Europe and I think back into the States again there. Touring with the uh, latest album, which is coming from a sort of, um, it's about a Sumerian goddess to a degree. There was a lot of talk about the inspiration behind the album in London, and uh, I'll leave you to <laughs> look at that one, that track in particular, Eresh Kagal of the Underworld. You get the gist of uh, where it's coming from. It's ancient Mesopotamia, the goddess of love, war and fertility, Inanna. Yes, and uh, it was all explained to us at the festival. I I confess, I've forgotten a fair degree of it now. But the music was very good and certainly the album is uh, very interesting as well, particularly with the sax and the flutes and coming into that bigger sound. At times very nice, at times it veers a little bit towards easy listening for my taste, but that one's a bit of a swinger, and again, there's some other really nice ones as well. And can she play? Can she ever? And she also likes to go for the full-on image as well. Problems with the vinyl, it seems, which could have been an issue, because at least one of our party bought the double album at a mere £50 for the gold vinyl. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll leave that at the back of the cupboard just for now, but it was a fantastic concert. And, uh, you know, very, very powerful player. And interestingly, I think she bought her first album out at the age of 15, 16, something like that, in her own release. Oh, it. totally. And it's uh, it's all standards, and very good that is and too. right out of the McCoy Tyner stable, it's sort of that yeah. powerful playing. I'll, I'll dig that early one out because it's uh, it's very different and it, and it shows all the influence which is picking up at a obviously very young age. Now, going back for many years again, David Bloom and Cliff Colnott. They've got an association for 50 odd years, I guess. Bloom, the educator, guitarist, flautist and founder of the uh, well-revered Bloom School of Jazz in Chicago and arranger and principal conductor of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, Cliff Colnott. Shadow of the Soul is their fourth joint release. Here's the opener, dedicated to the late 73-year-old baritone player and early student of Bloom's, Mark Colby. Here's mischievous Mark Colby.
mischievous mock. Colby from David Bloom and Cliff Colnett's recently released Shadow of a Soul. When asked about the title, he said, Over the last 50 years, I've met a few people who had a level of spirituality, imagination, hypnosis, heart, and individuality. Each one radiated an aura impossible to ignore. These people had what I've always called Shadow of a Soul. And who are we to disagree? Yeah. Absolutely. It just struck me looking back. I was going. To, I did say tempt you with saying how old was that TCB one? Terrifying. Over half a century. Fifty-two years old it is now. That's that just doesn't bear thinking about. October nineteen seventy. That was recorded. And uh, sadly, as we know, quite a few of the players are no longer with us. Still sounding fresh and modern. And always intrigues me how some of that music does. Some music dates very rapidly. Other music stands pretty good half a century on. I reckon. Of course, the problem is that we've been around for over yeah, half a century well, that's, as well. Uh, that's the other problem <laughs> now, as well, isn't it? did promise you a birthday, boy. Mm. Tenor Maverick Don Weller, who would have been 81 next Monday, ah. and we were both lucky enough to have the opportunity to play with him on the island. He passed away aged 79 back in 2020. Plenty of good material out there, but only two records of his jazz rock group, Major Surgery. And this rare live performance was captured on cassette and then mastered onto CD. The original quintet was augmented by Peter Jacobson on keyboards. He's already gone. Gone. Tony Marsh, the drummer, he's already gone. Only Jimmy Roche and guitar and bassist Bruce Colcutt survive. Journalist John Watson noted in his CD review, having hosted Don post a gig in Staffordshire, we were travelling on the train with Don the next day. Drip, 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 the woman sitting opposite Weller touched her hair, looked up and got a drip in her face and quickly moved seats. Don, said Watson, nudging the sacks next to him, fast asleep, said, I think the whiskey bottle in your tenor case is leaking. I pretty much think that sums up Don Weller in our experience. (laughs) One I always remember with Don was playing when he came over and we played a gig with uh, the old maestro with Jim uh, in a uh, car showroom and it was uh, one of those launches for a car. We were playing in the corner of the showroom, some nice background jazz and all the punters were coming in and of course there were trays of drinks doing the rounds of champagne to celebrate lunch or whatever it was and one of the young girls came over and said, would you like a drink? And Don took the entire tray off and said, yeah, thanks very much. (laughs) Well, don't forget, next week will be our annual Christmas party. But in the meantime, here's Fred Bear, the Threadbare Bear, taken from Don Weller's Major Surgery, rare live performance. See you next week. Jingle those bells. Bye for now.
Thank <laughs> you. 